Hunter x Hunter is a remarkable show. It is one of the top shows ever on Mal, plus it and Formal Alchemist Brotherhood are commonly said to be the greatest shown in anime ever. And of course, it has an opening that got stuck in my head far before I even watched the show. So, it has quite the reputation, and it is easy for shows with such a reputation to fall short when I go to watch them. See, like any hyped anime made before 2000, or half the hype shows from this year, though that's a topic for another video. But I feel no such feelings of disappointment after the first arc of Hunter x Hunter. So I want to get into a few of the things that made the arc stand out so much. There will be spoilers up through episode 21 of Hunter x Hunter hunter the 2011 version also please don't post spoilers beyond that point since i put the show on hold until i made the video and i don't want to be spoiled on the rest of the show so this arc of hunter key hunter follows the main character gone and his friends through the hunter exam where those who pass become official hunters which are like adventurer fighter type things one of the things that is evident from the start of the show is that things with the hunter exam are never quite as they seem for example the boat ride to the exam ended up being the first part or the family attacked by the bird monsters was also part of the exam with its own sort of twist though i'll be honest the first few episodes are not that great they had these interesting like mini twists and gave a foundation for the characters but it wasn't anything that excited me but it was not long before the show kept making me want more even if I wasn't fully enjoying myself. Throughout the first stage of the actual exam, which was them running through the tunnel, I kept wanting more. I wanted to see what was on the other side, what they would face next, and how they would overcome these challenges. The sense of adventure and just the pure fun of seeing more of the world drew me in. There's also the sense that there was more to see with the world. It did not have to show us everything right away. There are some shows that do everything that they can to grab your interest for the first episode, which leaves me enthralled with the anime and excited to see more. But because they went all out with that first episode, they don't have anything else to deliver later on. That's why every season there's like one or two shows that I love after the first episode, but in finding it just mediocre by the end. Hunter as Xylophone Hunter is the opposite. It gives the viewer just enough to satisfy them with the early episodes so it can have a greater impact later on. The first two exams were like this. We learned a bit more about the characters, and both the exams were unusual for a show like this which threw the viewer off, but there wasn't anything that great or stand out. It was after the second round of the exam that things started getting interesting. Specifically when Gon and Kailua were trying to get the ball away from the chairman of the hunter exam. This type of battle has been done before. You have a couple of rookies trying to team up to take down a master. But not quite like this. One of the things that the battle does is shows how weak Gon and Kailua are compared to a master and they have no hope of winning. This is something that becomes important throughout the exam since Gon is clearly far weaker than many of the applicants he has to fight. This battle also gives a lot to flesh out the type of characters that Gon and Kailua are. Gon is someone who will never give up. Kilua is very strong, but there are some times where he just doesn't want to fight. Plus, it also helps establish the friendship between the two of them, which is very important throughout the arc and the anime as a whole, I hope. Another thing that the fight shows is how the chairman likes to mess with the applicants, which it is a small detail here, but it ties very nicely into the final round of the exam. And then there's also the fact that Gon won. Sort of. Once he knew that he could not get the ball, he shifted his focus to instead force the chairman to use his right hand, which he does. I love when battles can add another dimension to the character's goals, as opposed to them just trying to beat one another. In this case, it allows Gon to win while still having the chairman be so much more powerful than Gon that there is no way he could win in the actual fight. Then, after the battle with the chairman, Killua killed two other applicants. There's a lot to Killua that makes him a fascinating character, and him killing the two applicants really shows more of who he is. He has no problem with murdering people, but he's also a fun-loving friend of Gon. These aspects don't make any sense together, and this disconnect is what makes Killua such a fascinating character. The third round of the exam has the applicants need to descend the giant tower in 72 hours. The applicants are split up, but the four main characters, along with the one named Tompa, are teamed up for the test. The main focus of this round is a series of one-on-one -on -one battles that the team has against the prisoners here. These fights served as character establishing moments. We saw how they think, 
their mindset for approaching problems, and there were also a lot of small surprises with each fight. And these surprises made it that despite the fights not being that important, they still were very interesting. Then the fourth exam. That is when the show really hooked me. For this part of the exam, they were on Zeville Island and had earned six points by collecting badges from the other players. The thing that this part does so well is how it utilizes the vast difference in power between some of the characters. A great, great example is when uh, Kurapika and Loyo encountered Hisoka, and they knew they had no hope of defeating him. So they instead negotiate with him, giving up one of the badges they collected. In many anime like this, you have this never-give-up mentality. But here the characters see that giving up is the best solution. And another example is how Gon has to take the badge from Hisoka despite being so much weaker than him. He knows he cannot win in a fight. So he practices with his fishing rod, grabbing the badge with it when Hisoka has his guard down. But then he's knocked out by another player who is buying on him all along and then loses his badge, only to be given his badge back by Hisoka. All these challenges the characters faced and overcame made the exam really great. None of the battles were just a simple fight. Plus, it really established Hisoka as a foe that they cannot defeat, which is good. A powerful villain that's just defeated at the end of the arc is much less impactful than the one that they kind of defeat, but lingers on. The fifth and final phase of the Hunter exam is the tournament, which is one of the most interesting tournaments I've seen in all of anime. Because this is a reverse tournament, where it's not the winner who goes on to the next round, but the loser. And the only one who does not pass the exam is the one who never wins a fight, or whoever kills one of the other candidates. The other twist of the tournament is that the only way to win a fight is to get your opponent to surrender. These twists really mess with the normal character motivations. They don't have to win all their fights, they just have to win one. And if they're against an opponent they cannot beat, there's no logical reason for them not to surrender. This is really highlighted during the fight between Gon and Hanzo. It's a completely one-sided fight. Gon is quickly defeated, but he won't surrender, meaning that Hanzo can't win. Hanzo eventually goes so far as to breaking Gon's arm and threatening to kill him, but Gon still doesn't give up. Eventually, Hanzo is the one to surrender because he doesn't want to hurt Gon anymore. This gives us a great look at Gon's character here, showing how foolishly determined he is. And we also see that Gon did not have any hate for Hanzo for what he did, despite all of Gon's friends having to restrain themselves from going after Hanzo. Gon's innocence and determination is, again, not unique for this type of storytelling, but it is used in ways we do not see often. There are a couple other fights that just end up having the character surrender without doing anything, which only works because of the type of tournament this is. Hisoka whispers something in Kurapika's ear and then just surrenders for reasons we don't know. This adds a lot of mystery without taking Hisoka out of the tournament. Then there's the fight with Kilua and his brother Lumi. From what we've seen so far, Kilua is a very interesting character. He is extremely powerful and thinks nothing of taking the life but he's also a child and enjoys playing. He really values his friendship with Gon. See, there are two sides to him, the assassin and the child. This fight showed the oppressive demands the family has on Kilua and how he's powerless to fight against him. Heck, Kilua did not even fight here. He just surrendered. Actually, this whole tournament was lacking in actual fighting. Every fight was either super one-sided or just had someone surrender right away. But even so, every fight had a purpose. The final thing that stood out to me is how all of the characters who got the Hunter's license exam failed. No, not that they failed the exam. Well, unless that ties into the thing that one guy said about the exam not being over, but I have not watched any more yet, so we'll ignore that for now. But back to it. None of the main characters deserve to get the license. Gon wouldn't have passed the fourth round if it weren't for Hisoka returning his badge. Likewise, Kurapika wouldn't have won his fight against Hisoka unless Hisoka surrendered. And it's not like this was just a friend helping a friend out, so it doesn't make any sense. Then there's Leorio, who only made it so far because he met Gon and the rest of his friends, but also because Kilua killed Leorio's opponent, making it so Leorio automatically passed. There's typically an element of excitement when a character reaches their goal, like passing the hunter exam. But the failures taint the excitement. It gives them more to overcome. A desire to prove that they really were worthy. And this is only the start of Hunter x Hunter. But I'm already enthralled with this series. The characters in the world are so full, I want to see more. And with what I know of this story, well, I'm looking forward to an incredible ride. And I'm sure this will be far from the last time I talk about Gon's bizarre adventure. So, look forward to that.
and thank you for joining me for this video. And now that I have finally finished and uploaded, I'm going to go watch more Fate Stay Hunter.